All right, moving on. Topic Tuesday. Here's where you guys get entertained because, because I'm not a physician and just sharing with you information. I do not know how to pronounce a lot of words and I butcher them. So laugh with me. Please don't laugh at me. I'll <laughs> be really sad. All right. This is from one of our um, medical students. Mm, let me just skip ahead. I'm curious to see who wrote this one. Oh, no, this is our resident. Duke is now a resident. That's from our resident Duke. Welcome back and hope your week has been getting off to a great start so far. Today, we're going to start covering diuretics. They are commonly used medication for patients that have cardiovascular disease. But let's talk about what is a diuretic. Uh, because it's pretty common in this community. Some people are on them. Some people are not. Some people are on them on occasion when needed. So let's figure out what they are. So diuretics are a medication that actually promotes the production of urine by the kidneys. And that will help to lead to an increased excretion of water and electrolytes from the body. And they're commonly used in the management of cardiovascular diseases, particularly conditions like hypertension, which is high blood pressure, heart failure, and edema, which is fluid retention. In cardiovascular disease, diuretics help by reducing the volume of blood circulating through the blood vessels, thus lowering your blood pressure. This effect can reduce the workload on the heart, which is beneficial for individuals with conditions like congestive heart failure or hypertension. By removing excess fluid from the body, diuretics can also improve symptoms of edema, or we just talked about swelling, uh, which would include swelling in the legs or the abdomen, which often occur in heart failure and other cardiac conditions. So there's several different types of diuretics that are commonly used in clinical practice. Let's talk about a couple of these and have some fun pronouncing them. Okay, shall we? Biazide diuretics. Examples include... <clears throat> Hydrochlorothiazide, I think I take that one, and chlorothylidone, mm -hmm. chlorothylidone. Thiazides work by inhibiting sodium, leading to increased excretion of sodium and water. Loop diuretics, an example of a loop diuretic would include, I wrote notes here just so you know, uh, furosemide, that's the one I take, so I'm on a loop. Hmm. Eumetidine, yep, nope, eumetidine, mm hmm torsamide, I think I got through those. Loop diuretics block the reabsorption of sodium and chloride ions, thus promoting the loss of water, which follows the excretion of sodium and chloride, okay? Potassium sparing diuretics. I know a lot of people that are actually on these, and examples of these include spironolactone, Fluoranon yep. and amylaride. <laughs> These diuretics work by either blocking uh, the action of aldosterone, which is a hormone that regulates sodium and potassium balance, or directly inhibiting sodium channels. They help to prom promote diuresis mm -hmm. while conserving potassium, which is often lost with other diuretic therapies. Okay. I swear I'm trying so hard not to crack myself up. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> carbonic, mm -mm. I didn't write that one down, and hydrase inhibitors, it sounds really good to me. I did write this one done, down, uh, acetazolamide, acetazolamide, uh, mm -hmm. it didn't involve that word right there. That big one right there. Yep. It's an example of this type of diuretic. They cause increased excretion of bicarbonate ions and water. Whew, my mouth hurts after all these big words. Okay. Each type of diuretic has its own mechanism of action and potential side effects. So the choice of diuretic and dosage really depends on your specific needs and condition of the patient. If you think you would benefit from a diuretic, we strongly recommend that you have this conversation with your provider. And that's all he had for everybody that day. We hope this was helpful and join us again this next Tuesday, which is today. And I will tell you, I skipped ahead to today and we did talk about diuretics again. And you're going to have to take a look to learn a little bit more about LASIK. That's the one that was discussed today. A lot easier to pronounce that. So it is very interesting. You know, I think a lot of people think that 
when you have an, uh, a dissection or when you've been diagnosed that uh, everybody's just given a, a beta blocker. Not true. Some are given ACE inhibitors. Some are given um, uh, other types of drugs. And there's reason why people are given ARBs or ACE inhibitors or beta blockers. It's just not one. Well, there's many different types of diuretics that help you reduce the excess fluid in your body and they each impact things a little bit differently. So it's, I think that's fascinating. It just isn't one. They do different things and different people and their different situations would be prescribed. So talk to your physician. If you're noticing that, you know, when you take your watch off, it's super tight, it's left a big mark. A lot of men will notice when they take their socks off, they have a huge band, a line around their, their you know, lower shin area. Uh, women, we right away see it in our fingers uh, when our rings can't come off and we're all squirting Windex to try to get them off. If you're seeing this more and more, uh, a lot of swelling in the ankles, the wrists, the hands, fingers, toes, you really want to have that conversation with your physician. Discuss if it's actual edema or if something else is going on and if something needs to be prescribed to help fix it. That is your Topic Tuesday.